we're going to begin reciprocal functions by looking at what that word reciprocal means. So if I ask you, what is the reciprocal of 5? We know that 5 has a denominator of 1. If we flip that around, we get the reciprocal, 1 fifth. So if I say, okay, what's the reciprocal of x? Again, x has a denominator of 1. Reciprocal means we're going to flip that around, and we're going to get 1 over x. However, we know that we can't divide by 0. So x is a variable re representing any number, but it cannot be 0, otherwise this is undefined. If I say, okay, what's the reciprocal of any function, we're going to take that function, we're going to flip it over, and it becomes 1 over f of x, and again, f of x down here, this cannot equal 0, otherwise we're dividing by 0 and it's undefined. This is a reciprocal function, we're going to have a variable in the denominator. Let's graph a function, just f of x is equal to x, then we'll graph the reciprocal function and take a look at how those graphs compare. So if x is negative 2, I'm just choosing a variety of points. I'm going to substitute in negative 2. When x is negative 2, y is negative 2. That's my first coordinate point that we can go ahead and plot on our graph. When x is negative 1, substitute in negative 1. y is negative 1. That's the second point that we can go ahead and plot. So you'll see that if we have just y equals x or f of x equals x, no matter what we put in for x, we're always getting that same value back for y. And then we can plot those points and graph our line. We're now going to take the reciprocal of this function. So this is x over over 1, flip it around, we get 1 over x, and I'm going to use these same values for x, substitute them into here, and see what my y coordinate happens to be. So let's start with if x is negative 2, if I put a negative 2 in here, 1 divided by negative 2 is just negative 1 half. So when x is 2, y is negative 1 half, so we're going to go over here, x is 2, y is negative 1 half, and we can plot that point, it's going to go about there. If x is negative 1, Substitute in negative 1, 1 divided by negative 1 is just negative 1. So now we can plot that when x is negative 1, y is negative 1. So that's going to go right there. So that is the same as what we had on this original function. If we put a 0 in here, 1 divided by 0 is 1 over 0, and that's a problem because we cannot divide by 0. So that point doesn't exist. It's undefined, so we cannot plot that. If we put in a 1 half for x, 1 divided by 1 half, remember we're changing division to multiplication, so this is 1 times 2, which is going to give us 2. So when x is 1 half, y is going to be 2, so that's going to go about there. When x is 1, 1 divided by 1 is just 1. So again, that's going to be the same on the original graph as well as the reciprocal graph. When x is 1 quarter, so again, 1 divided by 1 quarter is the same as 1 times 4, which is going to give us 4. So x is 1 quarter, y is 4, so that's somewhere about there. If x is 2, 1 divided by 2 is 1 half, so x is 2, y is 1 half. And we can see that we've got a general shape of a graph happening here. We can continue to choose values for x, substitute them in, and get our y coordinates. And you're going to notice that as x gets larger and larger and larger, we're getting closer and closer and closer to that x-axis. And as these values of x get closer and closer and closer to zero, we're getting closer to that y-axis. But is there any value where we can put in for x that will give us a y value of 0, a y-intercept? And as you play around and experiment with different values, you're going to see that we're going to get closer and closer and closer, but there's nothing here that's actually going to equal 0. Even if you switch to the negative values of x, we're going to get closer and closer and closer, but we're never actually going to get to 0, because when x is 0, 1 over 0 is the y value that we're generating. That is undefined. So we have what's called a vertical acid right here on the y-axis. It's a line that the graph is going to approach but never touch. So it's going to get closer and closer and closer but it's never actually going to touch or cross that line. So I use red just so you think danger, 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 we're getting close. It's never going to actually touch or cross it. We also have two points that are the same on both our original function as well as the reciprocal of that function. Those are called invariant points. So points that don't change from one graph to the next and they're not varying. Those are 
occur when the y coordinate is negative one or positive one. You'll notice that every y coordinate on the reciprocal function is a reciprocal of the y coordinate on the original function. If we reciprocate one, we're still gonna get one. If we reciprocate negative one, we're still gonna get negative one. We just move that negative up to the numerator. It is the same value. So when y is positive one or when y is negative one, those are the only two numbers that are the same value, original and reciprocal. We're going to have the same point when y is negative one or when y is positive one on our graph. We can then go ahead and connect our points in a smooth line. Try not to go straight up and down because then it is no longer a function, but we're gonna get closer and closer and closer. We're also gonna get closer and closer and closer here. These two arms, the two main parts of the graph are called the branches of the graph. And in this course, we won't be adding or subtracting anything to our reciprocal functions. That would move our graph up or down. It's a vertical translation. Because we're not doing that this year, we will also have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Because if you go back here, there is no value we can put in for x that when I divide by that, I'm going to get a y value of zero. In order to graph a reciprocal function, instead of every time creating a table of values to generate those points, we can take a look at what kind of a function we have in the denominator. And then if we know that we cannot have zero down here, where we get a zero is where we're gonna have a vertical asymptote, and we also know that when y is equal to positive one and when y is equal to negative one, those points won't change from the original graph to the reciprocal graph. So if I can figure out what values for x will give me a positive one or a negative one for y, I can quickly draw in those vertical asymptotes, plot those invariant points, and then knowing that general shape of the graph, depending on whether it's linear, quadratic, etc., we can quickly get our reciprocal graph. In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can take the reciprocal of a linear function. So let's begin with a linear graph, I can see that my y-intercept is negative 2 and my slope is 4. So we can quickly plot y-intercept negative 2 and then we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1 and etc to get that line. Now the reciprocal function, we're going to flip this around and it's going to become 1 over 4x minus 2. And the first thing we want to do is identify where those asymptotes are going to lie. I know that the asymptote occurs when I end up with a denominator of 0. I cannot divide by 0. So I'm looking for what values for x will give me zero in that denominator. So I'm going to go back over here for a second and we know that the zeros are the x-intercepts. They occur when y is equal to zero. So I can substitute zero in for y and then quickly solve for x. My x-intercept of that original function occurs when x is one-half right there. So I know that on the reciprocal function if I put a one-half here, half of four is two minus two is zero, that's going to give me zero on the bottom. So on the original function where I have an x-intercept, on the reciprocal function that's going to make the denominator zero, I will always have an asymptote at that location. So this will divide my graph into two separate regions. We're also in this case going to have a horizontal asymptote right on that x-axis where y is equal to zero because there's no number here where we're going to put something in here that one divided by that will get a zero. So we can draw that in as well. Next we're going to determine those invariant points. On a reciprocal function they occur when y is equal to positive one and when y is equal to negative one. So I'm looking for the values of x in each of those cases and the original function is is going to be a lot easier to solve for what that x value is as opposed to this one. So let's go with that. So we're going to begin if y is equal to positive 1, we're substituting 1 in the place of y, and we're looking for what that value of x is. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides, divide out that coefficient of 4, and I know that when y is equal to 1, I have an x coordinate of 3 quarters. So we can go ahead and plot that as our first invariant point. And then our second one is going to occur when y is equal to negative 1. So again, we're substituting negative 1 into the place of this y, and we're looking for what that x coordinate is when y is negative 1. So we're adding 2 to each side and then dividing out that coefficient. So my next invariant point occurs when x is 1 quarter and y is negative 1. And you can see that those points happen to fall on that original 4x minus 2 graph. They're going to be the same reciprocal as well as original function. So now what we're going to do is say, okay, we know these are kind of the boundaries of where that graph is going to lie, each branch of that reciprocal function. We're going to start at that invariant point, and I'm going to go up toward that graph, trying not to go straight up and down, which is going to be really hard because I don't have a lot of room here. And then I'm going to approach the horizontal asymptote here. I'm going to, again, start at that invariant point, and we're going to approach that horizontal 
horizontal asymptote, and then we're going to approach that vertical asymptote. I'm going to state the domain and the range for each the original function and the new function. So my original function is just that blue line. We can see that x is going to be an element of the real number system, and range is also going to be an element of the real number system. Now in terms of the reciprocal function, I can see that I'm going to have every value of x along the x-axis except for that one half. I'm going to have every value going to positive infinity except for that one half. So the domain is all real numbers, it's just not going to be where that vertical asymptote lies. So we're going to have x cannot equal one half. Similarly, on the range, we're going to see that we're going to have all values of y, but y will not equal zero, and we're going to have all values of y greater than zero. So y is essentially going to be every value, it's just not going to be zero. The range is a set of y, where y cannot equal zero, y will be an element of the real numbers, every other value for y is acceptable.